<laughs> Welcome to Christian Fitness. This is our Walk Fit week. This is week number two of the Walk Fit program. Week two, that means it's show number four. four. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you saw week one. If not, you've got to go to ChristianFitnessTV.com and watch week one because we have something really special that we did on week one. It was the third episode. And what we did is we wanted to take you, you know, I don't know, make walking. it easier for you. Yeah, exactly. Walk walking. with you. <laughs> and how boring is it to just walk at home or just watch us work out at home? So what we did was we took you on a little virtual tour yes. of a park here in Pinellas County. And uh, so anyway, here's what you do. You can get your big screen TV or whatever TV you have or your, or phone. Even your phone. Here you go. So this is what we did in week one. We did this little virtual tour for you. But isn't that amazing? Look at the mangroves, this cool little boardwalk. They had so a watchtower. So welcome watch to tower. Florida. Yeah. You're literally welcome <laughs> so to Florida. So not only is it a walking show, it's also a travelogue because we're taking you on a tour of some Florida sites. But uh, so anyway, we thought this would be fun for you. So go back and watch episode three of week one of the Walk Fit Challenge, and you can actually walk with us. So it's a lot less boring than uh, just you're staring just at a wall. You're not just seeing us, you're seeing us walking, but you can't see us. You can just see the walk yeah, around. A lot, a lot of fun. So go back and watch that episode and we'll be doing some more of those in the future and, you know, take you to some parks around uh, Florida. I don't know how much traveling we'll do, but we'll start in Florida since that's where we live. We're going to try to find as many parks as we can. Sorry, honey. All right, it's our encouragement for you. You've got to sign up for the Walk Fit Challenge. I mean, you don't have to, but it's helpful if you do. It helps us. That way we can encourage you and um, you do that. It's really simple. First of all, you need some kind of a counter. Something. Step counter. Oh, I'm a donut. I wear a Fitbit. Lori's got a little Apple Watch, yep. but there are a million, million of them There's out there. There's so many of them out there, and they're all really good. So find one that works. And by the way, little tip um, check your insurance company. Sometimes you can get credits, and like that Fitbit was free. So you can get credits by doing certain things and they'll actually give you one for free. So check out your insurance company. You might be able to find out. Something. And not only that, ours were with, I mean, I'll just say we're with United Healthcare and they'll actually pay you money toward products. I mean, they don't just give you cash, but <laughs> if you reach certain health goals, right. they'll actually give you money. So I'm saving up now to get an Apple Watch. So I'm gonna upgrade from my Fitbit to an Apple Watch when I get enough credits. So anyway, check with your insurance company. But if you have an Android phone, you can download Google Fit. If you have right. an Apple, Apple. Apple has its own health program. Right. Of course, any kind of Fitbit or tracker. There's little belt trackers you can wear, all kinds of Oh, I actually counts. just ordered through your insurance um, a little Fitbit clip. So I'm actually going to wear a Fitbit clip and use my Apple, and we'll see which one we like easier. And by the way, if you're not real tech savvy, fit Fitbits are really easy to use and they're great motivators. They all are, but that one will literally, it'll vibrate and tell you to get up and walk. <laughs> it so, reminds like you every that. hour. It oh, does. you've only taken 20 steps this or, hour. Or you need to stand up yeah, yeah. So or anyway, do something. They're really, really good. Step number two. So step number one is get your, your step counter of some kind. Step number two is go to countit.com. We've actually set up a little Christian fitness group. So get your cell phone out right now and take a screenshot of your monitor so that you count know it. the group code and everything. But anyway, go to countit.com and search for the Christian fitness group and it'll give you, it'll ask you for an invite code and there's your invite code, F89C03A9. Yeah, click a picture of this so that, and by the way, you can watch this again later on. And it's so on our website. It is on our website. So, but that's what you're gonna need. But so anyway, us. you've got your step counter now. Step number two, go to countit.com and sign up. And you can use whatever username you want. If you want your regular name, we may end up calling you out in a later show. So if you use your real name. <laughs> we will try to promise that we'll use your first name. If you use your real name, which is fine, um, we'll just call you by the first name yeah. because we know, you know, there's privacy things or just come up with a name you like. Nobody needs to know who you are. You just need to know that. So step number two, go to countit.com and sign up. And then step number three, of course, pretty simple. Watch us live weekly on Mondays. We're live on Mondays, and we're going to give updates and things on our Monday live show. And then, of course, you can watch us at ctnonline.com every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and you get to see more of the Walk Fit Challenge as we move forward. Since we're only on week number two, it's a 12-week program, so we're early, early in the Walk Fit Challenge, so join us. And I think the other part is we're live on Monday at one, and we're here at one o'clock during the regular time of the show. 
Did you notice that our time changed? We announced that, but. <laughs> anyway, so three quick, easy steps, and now here you go. Here's our current leaderboard. This is only after, I mean, this is, I mean, we're only in week two, so the leaderboard is a little shy so far. Um, but anyway, as you can see, the blue one is me. I'm not even in the, I'm, I'm a little slacking. <laughs> I'm not even in the lead. Anyway, <laughs> this is what countit.com will look like if you join. You'll be able to go on and see what position you're in, see how many steps you have, what your point total is. And, you know, you can get a whole group together. You can get, you know, I encourage you to get maybe 10 people from your church together. Mm -hmm. Everyone sign up and then you can, you know, you can have a little group. You can compete with each other and see who has more steps that week. Well, I think it's great because you have two ways to have an accountability department, um, a partner. Either you partner with some friends or a church or a group that know you so you can keep each other accountable, but so will this and so will your phone. So actually that's three. So there's a lot of ways to make yourself accountable so you'll continue to want to walk because this is all about just getting healthy and moving. We want you to move. So that's what's most important, but that is a great tool. Yes. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. So our feature, and we love to feature who's doing what, and here yes. you go. This is one of the leaders on our leaderboard, and you say, how on earth do you get 10,000 steps in one day? Here <laughs> you go. Jim, he's from Illinois, 7,000 steps just walking his dog one time. Wait, so, did you say he's from Illinois? He is. Isn't it snowing there, and he's still walking? I wonder what the weather's like there. Let us know when you do this. If you really hit a benchmark of something that you really wanted, we want to know what the weather was like there because he obviously it's not snowing right there, but it's cold. 7,000 steps just walking his dog. So there you can see his dog's got his little toy with him. <laughs> but anyway, so he sent it and he said, Robert, you don't want to join the group, blah, blah, blah. And I said, how on earth do you get that many steps? How do you get 10 to 12,000 steps every single day? He said this to me, he said, here's how, it's pretty simple. I just take my dog for just a walk. Take and he loves to out. walk, so there you go. So whatever you wanna do, you know, we showed you the virtual tour. If you wanna walk with us, if you wanna walk with a dog, walk with family members, get your church group together like we talked about, and you guys set a walking time, go to the mall and walk. You can do the early morning mall walkers. You can go just to parks walk, and walk. Just walk, do something just be and be more active. Yeah. So anyway, I thought that was really, really cute that his dog is helping him to get 7,000 steps in just one walk with his dog. You need so. to ask Jim what his dog's name is because because that's his little walking mascot. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I love that. All right, honey, we have to have some facts. Since it is Christian Fitness, we'll bring some walking facts for you. And this is from Mayo Clinic, which I love the Mayo Clinic. They give you so many reasons to exercise and why, and really a lot of health tips. So here's one of the most important things. And I think if you're looking, whoops, if you're looking on cell phones all the time, you're actually you've got your head down. So here's what they're saying to improve your walking and trim your waistline and to improve your health, hold your head up high. So she's got her head up high. She's looking forward, not on the ground or on a phone. She's moving her shoulders naturally. She's not like this. She's in a natural position. Her chin is parallel to the ground. So basically they're saying have good posture, but have relaxed posture. Keep your back straight, not arched forward. Um, gently tighten your stomach muscles when you're walking. You know, I think that, I don't know, I'd have to ask, we have a crew member here that's a woman too. I think that might be a woman thing. I'm not sure if men have been taught when they're young, hold your stomach in when you walk and stand up straight, like put the book on your head. But anyway, tighten your stomach muscles, swing your arms freely, which is natural. So that way too, and by the way, if you're wearing something like this, as you swing your arms, you're even gonna get more movement from that. And then walk smoothly, roll your foot from heel to toe. I have never really thought about. That's, re that's really important, the whole heel to yeah. toe, because you know, you'll see on our set later on, but we've got a rebounder over there, we've got a treadmill. And a lot of times well, people, it's easy when you're walking out. outside because in order to stride, you have to go to your heel. That's pretty simple, that's pretty mm -hmm. basic. But when you get on a treadmill, sometimes people take shorter steps. True. A lot of times on a rebounder, they just want to bounce on their toes. True. And that can really start to affect how you do so you anyway when you're well, walking shins. make sure yeah make sure it's heel to toe and that gives you a nice as a matter of fact some of the new walking shoes that they have out there they've got a great curved bottom which That's, actually helps you roll yeah. as you walk so it propo propels you to walk correctly but thank you to the Mayo Clinic I thought this was yeah, fantastic just all the tips but it also shows you how many muscles you're working. I mean, you're, everything from getting proper posture right. with your neck, your shoulders, your stomach, your thighs, your calves. I mean, almost every part of the body is engaged when you're walking. And I just thought that was really important because you'll see a lot of people, they will bend over or they'll want to watch their phone while they're walking. 
You want to actually get really nice posture because you'll feel it. If you start walking, you know, five, six, 10,000 steps, you'll start to feel it in your shoulders. If you're arched over, you can feel it in your neck if you've got your neck pronated. Well, that's a so. good key. If you start feeling that way, that's time to correct. Yes. Start making an adjustment. You know, if you're if you feel tense in your shoulders, make the adjustment of relaxing and relaxing your arms. But it's, I think that's a great way to listen to your body while you're moving. And then the other part is benefit is you're getting oxygen into your blood by Absolutely. walking. So, Absolutely. and that's really important. And getting vitamin D if you're outside. Another very, very important thing, hydration. Yes. So we're gonna go to our kitchen, Christian Fitness Kitchen. Hydration, so, so, so important. I had so much fun with this. So speaking of hydration, honey, our question, health tip question for the day is, should you take a bottle of water on your walk? My answer is yes, <laughs> always, if you can. I mean, some people don't want to, but this is where I had fun. Um, let's read some facts and then I think we have some pictures that we're mm -hmm. gonna show of all these gadgets. I had so much fun finding all these crazy gadgets. Anyway, taking a bottle of water with you while you can walk, it sure's you it sure's a way for you to get hydrated. It is important to stay hydrated while you're walking. And hey, it's a little mini weight if you just have one, mm -hmm. but it helps prevent headaches and cramping. It helps even nausea. A lot of people can feel different things and they don't realize they're really just dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So Try different products and things like that, and we have some pictures. Yeah, of some so we products. picked a few products that uh, you might not be familiar with. Fun. I mean, this is just the norm. You know, these are our old logo, Christian Fitness, but those are fun. Mm. But these are more fun. Look so at you, this. you've got on the left, it's collapsible. The one in the center is actually shaped like a dumbbell, so you can fill it with more water to get a well, heavier maybe workout. Maybe you have to carry <laughs> two then, so yeah, you're you, balanced out, and then you'd have plenty. Of I thought that was pretty clever though. Shaped like this. a dumbbell, so you just work out so with cool. it. And then the third one is collapsible, crushable. I mean, really easy to walk with. Um, I like the first one though, it just collapses down when you're not using it. You expand it to get your water. And yep. then we have some more creative, and then unique ones more. if you want to really have fun with it. I saw one of these I've never seen before, and I thought that was really neat. It is an armband, kind of like what we do when we keep our um, Bible, we keep our phone in the armband. Well, guess what? You can have one on the other side as an armband. That's a water bag. And they're wearing that on their arm, which I think is crazy. Then, of course, a backpack. And then what I guess at one point they call it, called it a fanny pack, or it's a waist pack right. now, which personally, try them if you want. If you want to just go buy lots of gadgets and try them. <laughs> gadgets. Then do it and let us know. They work. Um, but I kind of like the waste one because if you think about walking, it distributes weight in your core area. So you're not getting thrown off by having lots of things on your arms. Although the weight one, I kind of like if you're gonna use two weights, although if you drink one and one weighs less than the other, so. You know, but I like the middle one. That's my personal yeah, preference. Yeah, it depends on your preference. So or we just encourage get a you, fanny pack and put this in the middle of it. You can do that. You can just hold <laughs> this bottle. You yes. can hold, you know, these. You can hook it on your belt. You can tie it. You can just hold it with your Wait, finger. Did People you say do all belt? kinds. Do we really have a belt? Well, drawstrings. Oh, most most yeah, pants true. have drawstrings and things. You can tie it on your drawstring. You can just, <laughs> you know, hook your finger. Whatever you want to do, we just encourage you to take just water with you. Get hydrated. Stay hydrated. That's all. And it really depends. Is. I mean, if you're hiking, the backpack can be a great one. If you're actually running, the backpack's a really good one. Then because the belt pack, you know, can jostle around if you're jogging. So if you're jogging, you may want the backpack or the arm. So anyway, it's a try preference. it. Try it's it. Let us know what you think. Preference. I just like, I mean, honestly, we just take regular bottled water. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I'll just stick it in my pocket. I'm gonna, we have not done the fanny pack thing, so I will make a promise. We will put one in a fanny pack and I'll wear it and see how it feels. You'll try it? Yeah, but personally, because we've worn them doing other things, walking, I think for me, I just like the weight distributed properly on my core, in my core area. And this is your core, by the way, your core is like from here to here. So there's plenty of tips for you for today, yes. how to walk properly, yes. stay with proper posture, get good stride length, and then yes. of course stay hydrated. And as you saw, there and is no the shortage, no shortage of ways to stay yeah. hydrated. Yeah, I think it's. I think that's a lot of fun. Just stay hydrated, however you stay. I wonder what Jim takes for his dog. 
how he keeps his dog hydrated for 7,000 oh, steps. And what if he had extra yeah. water for his dog? Well, Jim, uh, email me, let us know what you, what you do with your dog. Where are we? We are encouraging them to walk through the Bible with us. This isn't just a 12-week walking challenge. We actually have a purpose for it. Of course, the number one purpose is to get you healthier. The number two purpose is let's get into the Word. Well, I mean, get you closer to the Lord. I mean, if you're going to walk outside and spend time, you know, with the Lord, then get in the Word and then exercise that time, no pun intended, exercise that time in um, just what the Word says and let the Lord minister to you. Yeah, so you can see our little guy here has got his armband. That's what I usually use. I'll wear my phone on our arm, and that way both of us can hear it. Otherwise, you can just use an pod or whatever you want. Uh, but we encourage you, in 12 weeks, you can easily go through the Bible with us. And here is our little format, and we will have this online as well, but you can get your camera out and take a picture of this. But if you do our 12-week program, try to go through last week, which was our first week. You should have made it through Matthew 20. This week, we encourage you to start at Matthew 21 and get through Mark 10. But anyway, you can go through the whole New Testament if you follow this formula, pretty simple. And it's only, a, you know, gosh, I don't even know how it's, it's, it's not that much. It's maybe... I think you'll be surprised if you're listening to the Bible. If you are listening, you're going to get through a lot of chapters really fast because you're walking for at least a half hour. Yes. At least a half yes. hour. You can do that. So anyway, plenty of time. If you get behind, just <laughs> catch up. Matter. Try to catch up. Yeah. But this was just, we kind of divided it for you so you could have a plan. A lot of people like to have, you know, their plan formatted. Okay, what do I listen to? What do I read this week? What do I do this week? Here you go. This is what you listen to on week two, Matthew 20 through Mark 10. And we, what we love to do is we'll just listen to it. And if you watched last week, we did a couple out in the park where we paused and, and had a little Bible study. And that's what we love to do. We'll listen to it and something will jump out at one of us. We'll go, oh my gosh, I heard that scripture in a new way. Or, oh, let's talk about that scripture. And then we'll mm -hmm. keep walking. 10 minutes later, we're still just talking about that one scripture. So recently, fed. yes, recently, let's this is one that was work. really powerful. See if I can get it loud enough to pick up on my microphone. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So that is Matthew 22. And so we were walking, listening to that. And I thought, man, just amazing. First of all, the Pharisees are trying to trip Jesus up. They're like, oh, well, which is the greatest of the commandments? So they wanted to try to trap him. Um, anyway, go back and listen to all of Matthew and it'll make more sense. But Jesus is going to have no part in that because there's really, he's saying, look, there's only really two laws and they're actually one law. They tie it's all into the, the same. same. You receive Christ and you receive the love of God. And then that's what you focus on is the love of God. I mean, you let the love of God dwell in you richly and then pour out the love of God on others. I mean, really, it came down to that. He's telling them laws and rules because that's what they're accustomed to. But I mean, really, it's just, love people and that's Simple. what jesus is saying yeah you don't love the commandments yes the commandments are for those that aren't operating in love you have to be told don't kill don't steal right. don't, if you love so that's you're not going to do those anyway it's not right. even an issue so he's saying you guys aren't going to trap me it's all about love you've got to love the lord your god with all your heart and all your soul and then love your neighbor if you love your neighbor you're not going to kill him you're not going to steal from him. you're not going to covet what they have you're not going to do any break any of the commandments if you love your neighbor and love yourself and love god so what did he do he did that by action. He loved them. He taught them, but he loved them so much that he taught them how to love by his display of love towards them, which I think is beautiful. So, that just popped out on me. Yeah, so, so as you see, we'll just start talking about the scripture next thing you know, well, let's get back to it. Yes. And uh, so anyway, we encourage you walk through the Bible with us and easily get through the New Testament in 12 weeks. And it is, what a, it's just, it's an amazing time. Uh, we encourage you to go to a park or somewhere um, and really that's why you're just, you're in nature, you're able to enjoy it and then just listen to the word at the same time. And then don't do the rest of the phone stuff. Just listen to your Bible. That way you can focus on the word. All right, we have four quick keys 
that I wanted to bring forward, and this is what we're trying to do in the Walk Fit Challenge. We want you to work on your flexibility, your balance, your strength, and your endurance. And as you saw in the little Mayo Fit Woman, she was working every part of her body, right? right. That little stance that she had, whatever she was And we're gonna doing. keep sharing this with you. You're gonna get where you're gonna actually remember all this, because we're gonna keep sharing this screen in every show, or at least until we, everybody, feels like, everybody feels like, okay, I've got that. I need to work on flexibility, balance, strength, and endurance. Yeah, so walking, simple, simple exercise. A um, lot, a lot of stress on most of the joints and things, like doing um, resistance training and some of those things. But all of these will be developed by walking, but you also want to develop all of these so that you can do a better job of walking. So, number one, flexibility. That's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on your flexibility. So we're going to go stretch a little bit. And we encourage you always stretch, just, warm up, yes, and cool down when yes. you go for a walk, especially always. if you're going for a long, long walk. If Jim's taking his dog or whatever you might want to do, if you're going for a long, long walk, stretch beforehand. And here's some really easy ones. Just step forward, get a little wider stance than you normally would. And you just want to shift your weight forward a little. Free tip. After you walk, if you wake up the next day and you feel stiff, then stretch again. Yes because stretching, and this is why we are really stressing stretching before you go or any, any kind of movement, is you're trying to bring, get the blood warming up to the muscle. You're trying to actually warm the muscles up. Switch. Instead of just putting on your shoes and going running, just right. run out the door. By the way, if you have a dog, watch your dog. If he sleeps or she sleeps, as soon as they get up, what do they do? They stretch, mm -hmm. naturally they just stretch. It heats up the muscle and then you become flexible. So this is why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Good. Come back to the other side again. And you're gonna to try to place this arm on the outside of your thigh. I'm um, okay. the opposite of you. So yeah, either way, we're gonna go both directions. So you just wanna <laughs> stretch. So you're gonna rotate the torso a little bit. Like I said, if you take a long, long walk and you're really pumping your arms, you're gonna to start to feel it. You'll feel it in your shoulders, you'll feel it in your back, so we wanna make sure that we're stretched. So then you go the opposite direction. Already changed. You've already switched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I love about this is we're stretching our torso, you're stretching your shoulder, you're stretching your tricep, mm -hmm. you're stretching your, um, actually the back thigh, which you'll feel if you stay down here long enough. And if you Good. feel switch. pain in your knee, get up and move, or just change the, the direction of your foot. Sometimes it could be just how your foot has is in a certain direction, mm -hmm. like you know, your foot can be changed in yeah, this position. You want position. your toe pointed in just a little bit. Right. Puts less strain on the knee, and the right. knee does not go past the, the toes. Yep. So you'll notice Lori's tibula my... straight up and down. Yep. Good. Other direction. But I've open up. But I've I actually haven't been doing this. I've been talking. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. We're gonna have a seat now. And you should feel that already in your legs and thighs. First thing I want to do is just pull <laughs> your knee up to your chest. Sit up real straight or as straight as you can. Don't, don't scrunch. Yep. Sit, pull your spine posture, up. Posture, posture, like, posture. Like you're actually pulling your head up. It's really important that your spine, you try to get your spine as straight as possible for most of this. Good, switch. Even while you're walking, I thought that was such a great example. They started everywhere from her head and went all the way down the body. Well, you think about if you're walking and you tilt your head down, you're actually putting force on your neck because there's weight. So you're walking and you tilt your head, you want to walk and keep your head upright. It actually Good. feels better Extend that it. way anyway. Now, a little more difficult, you're gonna take your right leg and cross it over the knee. And just like we did when we were standing and doing kind of the lunge, you're gonna do the same thing here. Try to put an elbow on the outside of the knee. And again, stay upright and just try to open up. Hi. Hey. Oh, you're going that way. <laughs> I'm going this then way. And we're gonna face away from each other. <laughs> oh, well, I was trying to avoid that because I wanted to face you. It's but... good to get each stretch for about 20 seconds. And then you can rest and do another 20 and rest and do another 20. So it's fine to stretch just this one position for one full minute. You can either do it for a minute straight, or you can do, like I said, 20 second, three different intervals. Good, let's switch. Oh yeah. And again, elbow, either yeah. way. You're gonna okay, do both gonna directions, so it really doesn't so matter which way you go. With you. And take and nice breathe. deep breaths, yeah. <laughs> breathe, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. Just nice and relaxed. And then the other direction. 
There, now I get to say hello to you. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this actually feels really, really good. Okay, good. Both legs down. I want you to reach out to your toes and pull your toes back. Now on this one, you do want to round your back. You want to round the back a little bit. So we're gonna actually stretch all the way from the lower back up through the shoulders. And depending on how flexible you are, you can start to push your, straighten your knees, push your feet out a little further. This feels so good. Good, point your toes away. And pull them back. And you should actually start to feel your muscles heat up. I'm, I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Well, and you'll feel <laughs> just this. Just stretching. And if, by the way, I was going to show you, if you can't do this, um, then just pull your toes back. Mm -hmm. So that way, if you can't pull by your hands, just at least. But the other part is the straighter you sit, the further you're going to go out. So if you're all like this, it, you know, it's a little bit, I mean, I can reach it anyway, but but just pull over. Or bend your knees. Just yeah. bend your knees, and then you can yes, reach your true. toes, and then pull your toes back. Or just pull your feet back on mm -hmm. their own. Good. And what I like to do is just kind of shake your legs a little. Shake them out. <laughs> <laughs> Loosen them up, and then we're gonna stand back up. A lot of times if you stretch like that and then try to pop right up, it's not as good for you. So we'll warm them back up, and then we'll stand back up. All right, minute and a half left in the show. We're gonna to continue to stretch. Let's again, go down the way we did earlier. You're gonna do a lunge, but this time I want you to take your back knee to the ground. And we're gonna work more on the hip on this one. So you really sink into the hip. And this will really help as you're taking your strides. Because what you want to do as you start to walk, you want to start to, as you get stronger, you get more endurance in your walks, you want to actually take longer strides and see if you can't stride a little further. And this flexibility of your hips is really going to help in extending those strides. You good? Switch? Yep. Oh, you didn't even stand oh, I up stay and down. do it. I just stay down here. <laughs> <laughs> Switch it. <laughs> Please go to our website, christianfitnesstv.com, and remember, follow the three steps. Get your step counter, go to countit.com and register, and then watch the show, and give us your feedback. Let us know how you're doing, how many steps your most recent walk was, how many steps you're getting per day, what hydration you preferred, what little oh, gadget yeah. that Lori showed. if you get showed. a gadget, <laughs> let us know. We want to know if you get a gadget. Good, stand up, and we're just going to bend and reach for our toes. And again, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, and join us again for the Walk Fit Challenge. God bless you guys.